please give a warm welcome to P.J. Fleck. Coach, I appreciate it. Yep, I appreciate it. Uh, good afternoon, everybody. Uh, it's nice to see Coach Spavadol sold the place out for me. It's nice. I appreciate you inviting a northerner down here in Texas. I really appreciate that. Sorry I was a little bit late, had a little bit of plane uh, issue on the way down. When a light goes on on the, on the jet, that's a problem. Uh, I learned that. We had to be able to land, be able to do some things. So um, I'm a little bit late, but I apologize. I'm glad Jake was able to do that. And uh, he's got that Texas State program heading in the right direction, that's for sure, especially with his offensive mind. I want to thank Clay Patterson, uh, our coach that we actually brought here, recruits the state of Texas for us. It's a big state for us, as well as it is for so many others. It's a big state for us. There's nine players on our, our roster right now with the addition of some others in the 2020 class coming up already. Uh, we have 22 commits already for the 20 class, uh, three for the next year's class, 21. But that'll be close to 10% of our team is from the state of Texas, which in Minnesota is a lot. And uh, we just want to say thanks to all of you uh, for believing in our program. And uh, you're always welcome up to the state of Minnesota. I'm just telling everybody right now, it is 94 degrees in Minnesota. So do not believe anything that you've heard about the weather there, except the weather in February. That is true, right? But we do have summers like everybody else. We have a lake house. It's beautiful. And uh, it is wonderful up there right now. So uh, what, what I want to do is kind of shift gears a little bit from the X's and O's. You guys had a lot of that in the last few hours. And you're going to have a lot of that as we keep moving forward. Uh, we're going to talk culture. I mean, we are going to talk the most abused word in football besides family is culture. Yep, culture, 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 culture. You're going to hear a lot about it. People call me a cultural guy. Call me what you want. I taught sixth grade social studies. Ancient Rome is really my expertise, right, before I became an NFL player and then went on uh, to obviously my coaching career. So I know exactly what all of you go through as an educator and a teacher. Uh, I did it for only three weeks, though. So I, I, I can only know what you did for three weeks. Sixth graders in ancient Rome, the day I left, we were in our togas and we were designing our ancient city and the NFL pays a little bit better than your teacher salary, so I ended up taking that. But um, we're going to talk culture. Now, we're going to talk about healthy culture. The reason why I talked culture so much is because a lot of people don't have it. And they don't know how to define it. They don't know how to make it. They don't know how to invent it. They don't know how to give it to other people and breed it within their program. If you are not having a healthy culture in your program right now, whether you're an AD, whether you're a coach, if you're not having that, you are behind. And behind means you will be fired at some point. I'm not saying because I'm a cultural guy, I'm going to keep my job. But my job is to stay ahead of the times culturally so you don't sit there and go, man, how did that happen? I have all these wins, but I got fired. Because beyond all the wins, you better be doing all the right things internally in your program and getting the most out of your players in all four areas of their life, academically, athletically, socially, and spiritually. Now, I work at a very liberal public institution. But spiritually doesn't necessarily mean religion. We'll get to what it actually means. But it means believing in something bigger than yourself. So here we go. I'm going to move pretty quick. Go figure, right? I'm going to move pretty quick. And then as you guys have any questions, feel free to keep them to yourself because I don't have enough time to answer them. So here we go. As we move forward, right? Now, this is a little bit about me. I'm 38 years old. I'm on my seventh year being a head football coach. I was the youngest head coach in the country four years in a row. I'm now the fourth youngest head coach in the country. I'm moving up. And so uh, I, I played uh, for the 49ers for two and a half years. I uh, got a chance to play in the NFL, got a chance to coach in the NFL with the Tampa Bay Buccaneers as a wide receiver coach there. And then all throughout college, Northern Illinois, Redkers, Ohio State, and uh, then obviously a head coach of the Western Michigan Broncos, who we got a chance to come here for the Cotton Bowl, which was really, really special in the state of Texas. And uh, I almost wore my cowboy hat to cover up my bald head, but I thought that'd be a little bit too much. So I wore shorts instead. Uh, you can see we've done everything from win championships to be the worst coach in America. For all of you out there who have struggled or have success, I have been 1-11. in 11. I have been ranked 132 out of 132. Worst coach in America right here that gets a chance to speak to all of you. One of the only non-Texas coaches that have the ability to speak is me. And I was the worst coach in America. Right? And I was also coach of the year twice. So when you start to hear all this, this has to do with culture. It's not just about the X's and O's. It's about the Jimmy's and the Joe's that you have inside of your culture developing as people. So this is my, um, as I move forward, this is my family. Let's see here, Matt, you might have to come up here just to make sure it stays with me because I hit a lot of buttons as we go. There we go. This is my family. You probably don't care, but I do. Because all of you have a family. All of you have priorities. All your players watch how you treat your family and how you treat your wife. Or how you treat your husband, if there's ladies in the audience. 
So understanding those are my four kids, 11-year-old Gavin, 9-year-old Carter, 6-year-old little PJ, I'm holding on to her for a reason. And then my 5-year-old daughter's Harper, she runs the whole place, which everybody understands. My wife's there, beautiful Italian woman. Uh, when we took the job at Minnesota, my wife literally would do anything for me, go anywhere for me. She just said, if you go there, we have to do it together. So you've probably seen her on TV, probably seen her in different reality shows, but she is, she is my better half. Truly, we do this whole thing together. She is at the facility every single day for a lot of different reasons. We want to show everybody what a marriage looks like, how to be able to treat your wife, but also our players go to her for a lot of different issues that maybe they don't feel comfortable enough coming to me. They have resources everywhere that they turn. Big part of it, our family is part of the profession, just like all of yours. 